The following is a presentation from Temple Baptist Church and Pastor Zane Fischel. How we have left? Psalms 78. Find your place in Psalms chapter 78. And uh, I want to read just a couple of scriptures and take a thought from that and uh, preach to you on this thought. God can. God can. Psalms chapter 78. And I want you to read with me. Uh, verses 19 through 22 and look at what the scripture says this this chapter has a lot to say about the foundations uh, that we share with our children and our descendants but I tell you I think that we ought to teach our kids a lot about the respect for the word of God respect for the house of God respect for the things of God when I was a little boy and I've told you this before, when I was a little boy, my dad wouldn't lay anything on top of his Bible. If he ever put something down, he wouldn't lay it on, on the Bible. If he had a book, he would always make sure the Bible was on top. And as a little boy, I mean, I know there's nothing to that, but as a little boy, I noticed that. And I asked him one time, why he does he said, he said, Zane, that's the Word of God. And it should always be on top of everything in our life, even the, even the material things that are around the house should never be laid on top of your Bible. It should be important. And I think it's important to teach your kids those foundations. But in, in, Psalm, in Psalm 78, verses 19 through 20, Israel asked a question. Look at what it says in verse uh, number 19. Yea, they spake against the Lord. And they said, Can God furnish a table in the wilderness? Behold, he smote the rock that the waters gushed out and the streams overflowed. Can he give bread also? Can he provi provide flesh for his people? Therefore the, the Lord heard this and was wroth. So a fire was kindled against Jacob and his anger also came up against Israel. Because they believed not in God and trusted not in his salvation. And these few verses Israel finds themselves in a time of unbelief or disbelief. And of course, this is talking about their wilderness journey. And this thing of questioning God takes place several times in your Bible. And I want you to notice a couple of times that this occurs. Quickly, I want to have you remind you of a couple times that this takes place. And remember where it comes from. In Genesis chapter 3, in verse 1, Satan causes Eve to question the accuracy of God's Word. And that's the beginning of the question, Hath God said? And I want you to know from that time to this, Satan has put in the heart of man to question whether the Word of God and what God has said is accurate or not. And down through the years, it has caused the skeptics and the atheists to question the Word of God and to question whether God said what He said in the Word of God. And it has caused men, uh, even to the, to the point today, most people don't even believe that we even have the Word of God. I'm glad that I know that I have the Word of God. That I know that this book is the Word of God. That I know that the Holy Spirit has the power to contain the words of God for humanity and man. If I didn't believe that God was powerful enough to put this Bible together, I wouldn't believe that God was powerful enough to hold on to my soul for eternity or to hold on to my salvation. I believe that God could put down in His Word exactly what He wanted in His Word and to keep from this book what He did not want in this book. And what we have is a complete copy of God's love letter to you and me tonight. I have no doubts about it. I don't question the, uh, uh, the accuracy of the Word of God. And as we study on Sunday nights, and I show you in those slides, you'll begin to see that your Bible is correct. The history of your Bible is correct. The truth of the Bible is correct. The spirituality of your Bible is correct. The archaeology of the Bible is correct. In fact, I believe there's no error or no falsehood in it at all. But I want you to notice where that came from. That question of the accuracy of the Word of God did not come from Adam and it did not come from Eve. It came from Satan himself. And if you ever get around somebody or you're, or you're involved with someone who questions whether God's Word is the Word of God, that's somebody you need to leave alone and stay away from and do not read after them anymore. You need to find some men that believe the Word of God is infallible and inherit and read after them and follow them and trust that God put 
together this book, and in His power and His might, He holds the Word of God uh, above the words of men, and God's Word is accurate. I want you to know question, uh, Satan questioned and said, Hath God said, questioning the accuracy of God. I want you to know he's accurate to every jot. The Bible said to every jot and every tittle of the word of God, every smallest mark, every crossing of the I, every dotting, uh, uh, crossing of a T and dotting of the I, God is accurate to. The second time we find a question in the word of God in this manner is when Pharaoh said to Moses in, in Exodus chapter 5 and verse 12, he said, who is the Lord that I should obey him and let Israel go? He said, I know not the Lord, and I will not let Israel go. In that question, Pharaoh is questioning the authority of God. And Pharaoh says, who is this Lord that you're talking about, Moses? I do not know him, and why should I have to obey him? But I want you to know between chapter 5 and chapter 14, Pharaoh found out who this Lord was. And by the time God was through with Pharaoh, Pharaoh let the children of Israel go. One, Satan, uh, Satan questions the accuracy of God, and Pharaoh questions the authority of God. I got news for you. When it comes to God and his authority, I believe that God's authority allows the moon to come up in the night sky and allows the sun to shine every morning. If it weren't for God, none of those things would exist. None of those things would work. I believe that God is sovereign over this universe, and he has the authority in my life and the authority in your life to do what he wills and I have no question about his authority tonight. Pharaoh questioned the authority of God and said who is this God that I should obey him and let Israel go? But I got news for you by the time God was done with him Pharaoh knew who God was and Pharaoh let the children of Israel go and eventually by the time God was done with him God had destroyed Pharaoh and all of his army Pharaoh found himself one day before this God and he knew that this God was the authority in the entire universe and the, and the authority in the entire world so there's a question given by Satan and a question given by an evil and a wicked king. And I can understand, I guess, some questions that are put. Satan put that question in Eve's mind because he's a great deceiver. And he wants to cause people to question God and deceive them into not believing what God has said. And I can understand an evil king not knowing God and questioning who God was and wondering why he should obey his authority. But in these verses right here, we're not talking about a wicked king and we're not talking about Satan, but we're talking about God's people questioning the ability of Almighty God. And I want to tell you something. There is something about the anger in God when He sees His people without faith. How many times did Jesus say to His people and His disciples, O oh, ye of little faith, O oh, faithless generation, how long am I going to have to be with thee? The Bible says the children of Israel spake against God and began to question God and said, Can God furnish a table in the wilderness? Can God God, give us the water that we need, the bread that we need, the flesh that we need. Can God? Now, I want to tell you tonight, by the end of this message, I hope you understand and realize that God can. You don't have to go through life questioning to see if God can do it. You don't have to go through life thinking that God can't do it. God can do it. Whatever God has promised, you can mark it down. God will take care of it. God will take care of you. God knows what He has said. God knows what He's doing. And I'm glad that He will do what He has said He will do. And He'll come through every time. I want you to look in a way of outline a, a couple of things before we leave I want to share with you out of this chapter some things that we find from the Word of God things that God can do number one can God free the weary can God today take those that are weary and slaves under sin can he allow them to be sent a Redeemer and released from the weight of that sin Chapter 12 and chapter uh, verse number 12 and verse number 13, it talks about him freeing the children of Israel from Egypt. Verse 12 says, Marvelous things did he in the sight of our fathers, and in the land of Egypt and the field of Zon. He divided the sea and caused them to pass through, 
and he made the waters to stand as a heap. They're reminded in these chapters that that God that they wondered, can God, can God, their answer is coming back, yes, God can, yes, God can, yes, God can free those that are weary. The children of Israel were weary under the taskmasters. They were working 16 and 18 hours a day. Their skin was brown from the sun. They worked under the, the slave masters of Egypt. There were no sick days. There were no days off. There was no vacation. And the children of Israel would cry out to God. God and wonder in their heart can God hear what we're saying does God know what his children are going through and I want you to know as they worked under those taskmasters there was not a Sunday morning service to go to and there was not a Wednesday night service to go to and there was no there was no sacrifices and they could not practice their religion there in Egypt and it seemed like God had turned their back on them and there was no way they were going to get out of this but one day God sent and a deliverer in Moses and God gave them their promise that he was going to take them out of that land and I want you to know the children of Israel realize that there's a God that can free the weary that God can take them out of the slavery that they're under tonight as you and I sit here we at one time were under the slavery of sin we could not get out of it there's nothing we could have done to save ourselves from our sin or from the curse of sin. There's nothing we could have done. There's no way we could have saved ourselves. There's not, there's not one thing we could have done to deserve the righteousness of God. There's no way we could have got out of our slavery and we were weary under that sin and that sin burdened us. You remember the first time you realized you were a sinner? Do you remember the first time you felt the weight of sin in your life in a certain a preacher was preaching or somebody talked to you about the gospel of Jesus Christ do you remember feeling the guilt and the conviction and the weight of that sin and the burden of that sin oh I'm telling you night after night you may have went home and tried to drink away that guilty feeling or maybe put some drugs in your body to get rid of that guilty feeling but the weight of that sin once felt in your life will never be relieved until the redeemer comes and the deliverer comes and frees you from that weariness of that sin I'm telling you tonight there's a Jesus who came to be our deliverer and 2,000 years ago on the cross of Calvary he gave me and you a way out of that sin there may be some of you tonight that are struggling under something else some other slavery that has you bound you, you're saved now. You've asked Christ to come into your heart. But there's some small thing. There's some area of your life that you're a slave to. There is some sin that so easily besets you. There's something that you're weighted under and Satan has told you, you'll never get over this and you'll never get over the weariness of being under this and your marriage is going through something terrible or your work situation is bad. And I'm telling you tonight, God can. Yes, God can. Yes, God can free you from the weariness that you're under. He tells me and you that when it comes to what we are expect to Him, in Ephesians chapter 2, He can do exceedingly, abundantly, above all that we ask or think. I have a God that can deliver us. I have a God that can, that can free us. I, can, I have a God that can take us out of our slavery. And I have a God that can free us in our weariness. Boy, thank God we have a God and know a God that can. Can God? Oh, yes, He can. Yes, He can. Don't you doubt Him tonight. Don't you sit here in unbelief tonight. But instead, the God of that Bible, don't believe this preacher, but believe that God of the Bible, that He is powerful. He is not weak. He is not feeble. He is not sickly. He is not in, in, in any way frustrated or intimidated by your situation. But God knows if you're weary tonight. Those, those, those uh, children of Israel cried out to God, and in their slavery, the Bible tells us in Exodus that God heard their cries and what you pray for in the wee hours of the night and what you stress over and pray for at these altars around this church I'm telling you as you pray there's a God that's listening to you and there's a God that knows that you're weary tonight and he can free you from that weariness number two can God furnish a table in the wilderness 
I love that word, furnish. I like the way that the Hebrew wrote that word in there. And it simply means, in the Hebrew, it simply means to prepare everything that is sufficient. He says in these verses, can God furnish a table? Can He give us bread? Can He give us flesh to eat? And it even mentions there in, uh, it mentions there about the rock and Him providing water out of the rock. Can you think of anything else you'd need? Don't you like eating? I don't know about you, but I love to eat a sandwich. Bread and a little bit of meat on a sandwich. One of my favorite things is a fried bologna sandwich. I know that's simple, but that's just about the only thing I can cook. But I can cook a mean fried bologna sandwich. Boy, God gave them bread and meat, and the Bible says God gave them water. I can't think of one other thing that God would need to give them in that wilderness journey. But it wasn't just one day that God showed up and spread a table before them. It wasn't just one night that God came up and spread a table before them. But I'm telling you, God came up for 40 years and every day provided bread, flesh when they needed it, and water when they needed it. God furnished a table in the wilderness. God gave them what they needed in their wilderness journey. Now I want you to know tonight that God can give you, you may be going through a wilderness tonight, but God can give you exactly what you need in your wilderness journey. Number three, can God forgive a saint who is astray? Verse number 37, For their heart was not right with him, neither were they steadfast in his covenant. But he, being full of compassion, forgave their iniquity. Thank God. Hallelujah for the forgiveness of God. David, I want you to come up and get us an invitation hymn together. Now I want you to think about these three thoughts. Can God free the weary? Can God furnish a table in the wilderness? Can God forgive the saints that are astray? I believe that God can. Would you bow your heads?